Here's another example of one with a passageway that goes through it. This is a double crib barn. Uh, this is a, an example, too, of a, a double crib barn where one crib is quite a bit older than the other crib. And you can tell, even on that picture, that the, uh, the logs are different quality. The construction is a little bit different. And uh, this one is no longer used. I actually took that picture a couple of years ago. And uh, you can see that somebody, they put a, a roof on it and they've got these poles to, to prop up the eaves and everything. This one has a loft in it as well. But, uh, yeah. This is, the, uh, this is the older side and the, and the newer side right there. And you can see these logs are not very big and they're, and they're still kind of rounded. They didn't really square them off very much. This is a picture, this one's actually not in the Ozarks, but at one time, you probably would have seen a barn or two like this. This is a, a transverse barn. Again, really transverse just means a, a barn with the, that has a passageway that goes through it. So several of the ones that we looked at, you could kind of call a transverse barn. But this is a really big barn. I think this one's from the Smoky Mountains. Has anybody ever been to the Smoky Mountains National Park? I think I, that's where I got the picture of that, that barn, if I remember right. Uh, but it's got a really a big, impressive log cribs in here. There's probably four, four of them, two on each side. And you can go right through there. Why would you have a big open passageway in the middle of a barn in the 1800s? What would be the purpose? Yeah, take a, take a, a wagon through there. Uh, you could leave it under there, or you could unload stuff in it. Lots of uh, people back in those days would have a, uh, a stomping area in, underneath the barn where you, when they raised wheat, they would take the wheat, throw it out, let the horses stomp around on it uh, to separate uh, the, the wheat, uh, the grain, and uh, that was... You know, that was used back in those days. Some, sometimes the transverse areas were used for that. Or you could uh, pull it in there if you had a loft and hoist stuff from the wagon into the loft. So there are a lot, a lot of different reasons for having a, an open area through the middle of your barn. Plus, it looks kind of neat, you know. And when you get your Model T, you can drive the Model T in there. Now this is a neat one, and you see some of these in the Ozarks. Anywhere where you got a lot of steep ground, and there's a lot of steep ground in the Ozarks, every once in a while you'll see one of these bank barns, and it's just what it sounds like. It's a barn that's built into the side of a bank somewhere. And uh, this particular picture was taken in Stone County, Arkansas, but you can find these uh, all over the Ozarks. And... Some of these barns could be uh, three-story barns. You have, in this particular barn, you've got a bottom floor down here that you can only get to from this side. You can, from the ground floor up here, you can go into the second floor. And then there may even be a loft in there. I'm not, you can't really tell from that picture. Uh, it's, there's enough room to have a loft in that barn. So, you know, just adapting to the terrain. So you, still, you can still see some of those bank barns around the Ozarks today. And this one has, looks like a, a, a pretty good rock foundation under it. And there's a, well this morning uh, when I was uh, driving into work, I passed a, a bank barn and it's, it's a, a not quite as, uh, tall as that one, but it's, you know, it's built on a little bank and still in use. 